space coconut. Okay, you're looking at six foundries being underfed by two main lines of 120 copper and 120 iron ore with all the load balancing packed into this 3x4 uh, footprint, creating 300 ingots per minute. So today I'm going to show you how to double underfeed six foundries without needing to go wide or up with the belt footprint. And before I get into it, be sure to sub if you're new and hit the bell if you want to see more videos like this in the future. If you ever want to talk about anything you see in my videos, follow me on Twitch where I'm live every Saturday with random streams during the week. Join the Discord if you want to find out when those random streams are and have some input on the games that I play on stream. Links to everything are in the description. So if you play Satisfactory, you no doubt have run across this lovely guide by I'm Kibitz. Where today, I'll show you how to build this epic steel foundry design that I like to call the steel engine. I really liked it, but I didn't want to build this structure and make it stand by itself. I wanted to find a way to integrate it into my building. Unfortunately, the kibitz build required one of the feed lines to come from the top. Uh, if I did that, it would interfere with how I wanted the building to be organized. So, because I know you want to know how I did this, I'm going to share this little secret with you. Unlike the kibitz guide, you don't need the frame foundation unlocked, but they can certainly make the foundry center floor look nicer if you have them, but it's not necessary. If you want to use these, decide where you want your center to be, and instead of placing your foundation, you're going to want to place a one meter tall frame first, then place your foundation on top of it. This one meter makes the entire changes the entire thing. Depending on if you want to use a solid foundation and just leave the the center open or if you want to use the the uh, frames, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you want to do. But for the sake of making it look nice, we're going to use the foundations. So these are all set up and now you're going to make your ceiling. Okay, just like the kibitz guide, you're going to place these in the center and just one notch past the uh, little thingy here. So the, so the face of these things, of the, uh, the feeding points, are just overhanging the edge of this. Okay, with all six foundries set up, we're going to pretend that all of your ore is going to be coming in from like this side of your setup because it's going to be very important that your uh, iron or your ore is coming from one, one direction and the side that everything is coming in on, you need to know which side that is. So we're going to pretend that the ore is coming from this side so it all is in this corner for the most part okay so the so as I said before the ore coming in from this side these need to go one click lower the two closest to you need to be one click lower because this if this is the side the ore is coming in on if the ore is coming in on the opposite side then those ones are gonna be the low ones and just follow this pattern all the way through except the one on the right uh, closest towards where the ore is coming in is going to go one click lower. The one on the left is going to be one click up. Okay, once all of those are in, you're going to also, I, for, I think I forgot to mention, make sure that they're all pointing out away from the center. So you have this kind of staggered looking thing. All of the ones on one side are lower than the ones to the right of it. And the side that's lowest, if it starts low on the side, that's the side that the ore is coming in on. And just double check and make sure you got the pattern right on the other side and we're set. Now, with your foundation set up and all of your lifts ready, you're gonna start with the top ones on the opposite side. So you're just gonna grab your first belt and then make it a 90, nice 90 degree angle 
and set it up so we have a nice straight line. Nope. And this way we have a nice straight line. Now it's not going to be entirely important that this is straight the first time. You just want, well, I mean, it should be straight, but this, whether it's further to the right or further to the left, you can adjust it later because this, as long as this belt is straight, that's all we care about right now. So set up your first one. I forgot about the, uh, this. So set up a one foundation right in front of the first two feeding points. You're going to set up your first splitter, but aim at the ground. This way it's going to snap in place. Make sure your splitters are going the right way. I did that wrong last time. And those are set up now. Get your merger in the same place, same direction. Now you can delete these. And I have problems with the belt. And this never works for me, so I always just delete it the first time. Make sure that your uh, splitters are connected to the feeders. In between, if you're use if you're doing this for a Kibitz's steel engine, you're gonna want this belt right here to be a Mark II, and then connect the splitter to the merger and then connect this splitter to the last endpoint, and you have this set up. Now just do it the same for the opposite side. Now you're done with this side and then we can play with this. You can play with this now or you can play with this later. It's just a personal preference. It depends on what you feel like doing at the time. And place your splitter in the center and then make sure it's right next to the edge. Right in there and you have this nice pretty angle. You can get rid of the foundations. And then you're done with the top half. Now you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side, and this is what, well, well, we'll show why we need it on the other side later, but start at the back, create your 90 angle, and get it just past the splitter. Then bring this all the way back and get your nice 90 degree angle. Make sure you have enough space for the splitter. The same thing as before, make sure your splitter is going the right way and have that lined up on the belt. And do the same for each splitter and you should have enough space for all of it. Now before, it, before you place that merger, it might be easier to just get in here and connect to that belt. Oh, no, no, no. Make sure you don't do that. Let's see which, which one. Oh, that's why. Make sure this is going the right way. And we'll scoot it a little closer. Get rid of the belt. Connect that. Connect the merger. Connect the splitter to that merger. Give ourselves a mark two. That one's already connected. And this one will connect to the last in feed. Now, you guessed it, you can do this on the exact, do this the exact same way on the opposite side. If you do need to go under these belts, you can crouch and you'll fit right under it. And I think that's 
it. No, it's not. Yep, that's why I like to delete that. So mark one, mark one, mark two, mark one. And then that's it. That is literally it. You have... Well, I guess it's not literally it. You throw your splitter in. How far? One click out. Actually, this is going to be Mark 3. I think it's going to be Mark 3 if you're running... 45. Now that I, yeah, it's going to be running Mark 3. Now, whichever or it doesn't matter which side gets which or, but the reason the, the reason the uh, higher belts are on that end is for this. So let's say we have, uh, let's just do this. We have two belts of or coming in, right? The one on the ground can go right into the feeder. No problem. Make sure that's a, a, a Mark III, so you get all of the ore, right? In order to keep this same footprint, this ore can travel over these ones. So you're going to get the, uh, what is this thing called? the conveyor pole and set it right in front of the splitter and then get one over here and you're going to do the same thing but depending on where that is there you go that's what we want and then get that to connect over that. Isn't that beautiful? And then this will go straight into that. You can adjust this pole to make that 90 degrees or whatever, but it's you, you really don't need it. And that's it. And I, I wish I had the fly mod. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> Everything, as long as you reconnected all of the belts and there's no issues with that, it should run just fine. Let's get rid of this. And that's it. And all of your belts, depending on the ones that are coming out, all of it fits within the same... Well, I guess you have a little bit sticking out. But I mean... That's what, one third of a tile? One third of one tile? Yeah, man. That one extra meter at the bottom, that makes this possible. So if you use this technique on other, um, on other projects, if you're gonna underfeed machines, it's gonna save you a lot of space and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work out really, really well for you. Now I am, curious if this technique can still work with more machines. I haven't gotten that far. I'm only playing with steel, but yeah. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it helped you. And let me know if you like it, because I might, I might do more of these in the future if I come up with something good. In the meantime, I got a factory to build.